Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, I'll be talking about supervised tracking using the new Search from Soft capability. So that capability runs when the shot is already solved. So here's our initial shot, and we're just going to go and do a quick automatic solve on it to get started. That could be based on supervised tracking or whatever, but we just need a starting point. So here we are. We've got a solve scene. And now let's suppose we want to add some more trackers. And we're going to pick out one of the sticks here on that little footbridge and create a supervised tracker on it. So here we go. Maybe we'll have it generate a key every uh, 12 frames. And we'll start tracking through the shot. And we'll just let that go. We'll take a look at it. Maybe we'll adjust the keys a little bit. You know, so we're kind of zooming in on the uh, stick a little bit. So it's always a good idea to adjust those keys, especially when you're going closer and closer into something. Now here, the feature has gone off the edge of the image. And after a little while, Synthize isn't able to determine where to look for that feature anymore. And even when it comes back on, there's no way to tell that aside from, you know, you're looking carefully for what's going on in the shot. So the new capability is, is controlled by the search from solved uh, item over here. And in order for it to work, the tracker itself that you're working on has to also be solved, not just the entire scene. And we could, in fact, solve the scene based on using this entire track that we have, or we can simply turn on the zero weighted tracker button and get an instant solve for that track based on that initial tracking data. So that's what I've done here. And now, as controlled by the search from solved, see here, it doesn't know where to look and now it does. Now that search region is being driven off of the 3D location of the tracker. And now, just for further stuff, I'm going to turn on the Shift 5 pan to follow based on this 3D point. So I can now scrub through a little and everything, the camera view will track along. So what you should notice, of course, is that this predicted 3D location isn't particularly close to the stick itself. So that indicates that we've got some sort of a problem here. And that can be due to really two common causes. One is a kind of shot that has a lot of wipes where the trackers are very short-lived and you can build up cumulative errors over the length of a shot when you compare what you have at the beginning of the shot with what you've got at the end. And when you do have that circumstance, trackers like this, where you do have the same thing being tracked all the way through the shot, those are very valuable in keeping the geometry of the shot stable. The other sort of reason for this is lens distortion. And if you look at this uh, overall image, you'll see that this vignetting in the corners is indicating that it was shot with a wide-angle lens, a little lens extender, in fact. So that's uh, the root of the evil here. And we can go over and tell Synthize to calculate the lens distortion and just update the solve a little bit. And now when we zoom back in, we can see that we're a lot closer to uh, the actual location. So, you know, so far the calculated 3D location was based only on that initial part of the data up here. Now we can start updating this track again based on the new data. So I'm just going to go and wiggle around in the tracker viewport there and turn that back on. Actually, I may need to get it a couple of frames here since it's still close to the edge. And so now it's going to follow on. Turn the pan to follow back on. And 
now you can see we're continuing to follow this. I'll just add some more keys as we go along. So now we're starting to look more and more just at the end of the stack. Now eventually we're looking pretty much edge on to the bridge here. And sooner or later we're going to just drop all the way behind it. The lighting is getting all blown out. So I don't know, somewhere in here we'll just say, well, that's good enough. And you know, now we have a track and a 3D location for this entire sequence. And the other thing that I'm going to do now that's always a good idea, uh, just during the initial tracking process, I didn't keep the uh, blending on, but now I'm just going to go through and do a quick retrack with that blend turned on. So for any given frame in the middle, it's using both the prior and the following pattern and averaging out the position. So it gives a smoother set of curves. And there's our new fully tracked out feature. The thing to do now is just to turn off that zero weighted tracker flag so that when we resolve the scene, this tracker will get used to help update the overall camera solve. And we'll also lock up that tracker so it's not constantly being retracked. So that's a whole new interesting piece of workflow that's possible with this uh, search from soft capability. I'll point out that if we weren't able to update the position of the tracker to match up adequately on the stick right when we came back on screen, uh, here we, we just reran the lens distortion to get everything to come out right. If we hadn't been able to do that, then it would have been necessary to go and turn that search from solved off so that we could have gone and just manually done the supervised tracking on that feature without it having getting thrown off by the 3D location until we could get the overall solve improved enough so that everything matches up. So hope you are able to take advantage of that feature. It can save a lot of time with these kinds of shots. Thanks.